In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at an all new stack from HGLRC. Now, this is called the HGLRC Zeus 35, and this is their second revision, or we can call it the V2. Now, what we're going to be covering today is overall specs, how it fits in the market, and also how to connect this if you didn't know how, and what are some best practices and some things to take note of while you are connecting this. Now, what is this board? Well, this is an F4 flight controller. Not only that, it also has the ESCs built in, also the power distribution board built in, and the on screen display which is pretty insane and with a shunt resistor to give you current reading so this is a pretty amazing little board now if you take a look down the comment section many people don't like these types of boards because if one thing goes bad then the whole board is gone however some people who are more proficient in building and like an easy installation this will fit the job just fine not only that it'll also reduce weight now i also recommend not adding this on a high demanding quadcopter more of like a freestyle long range little budget beast that'll handle it's fine however as you can tell it is a 20 by 20 stacking solution but it is pretty freaking massive now the width is 41 centimeters and the length this way is around 33 centimeters so it is pretty big for a 20 by 20 uh, flight controller or all-in-one solution however some frames might be able to incorporate this so before you actually pick this up you need to make sure if it will actually fit in your quadcopter now the specs on paper look absolutely awesome so we do have our osd as you can tell right here we also even have flash memory which is really great if you want to do some black box logging we have a shunt resistor here for current reading and if we flip this over to the side we just have our microcontroller unit and obviously the fets for the esc and also the fet drivers right there if you can see those so overall this thing has pretty much everything you need now before getting into the connection setup let's take a look at some of the things they provide you in the package they give you a pre-made xt30 which is really great if you wanted to use it for a micro or something about a three inch or below possibly even four inch they also give us the xt60 connector with some 14 gauge wire which is really great and two low esr capacitors whether you're going to be putting it on a micro which which is a 220 microfarad 35 volt low esr capacitor and i really like the attention to detail where they provide you with the heat shrink on these so you don't so you don't accidentally bridge these and also they provide you one if you're going to be setting this up on a much bigger quad which is a thousand microfarad 35 volt low esr capacitor now if you're going anything above four inch i'd highly recommend you stick this on there either if you're going small you should stick one of these on there because the filtration is pretty minimal for such a stack so keep that in mind and that is very important you do that or you have a high risk of a lot of noise and or burning the thing so keep that in mind now the first and most important thing is to know how to set this into place and this should be installed in your quadcopter like this you have the usb to the left and on the bottom it's very important you do it in this orientation or this thing will never fly unless you know what you're doing so you can find the arrow key right there and this is saying this is where the top of the board should be and also where the camera is going to be pointing so like this you'd want to install it this would be the back of your quadcopter now we'll start with the easy part which is the power here we have bat and ground and let's just take the xt60 for example or xt30 here for example for the bat you want to put the red wire and for the ground you want to put the black wire and like this you've installed your battery connector however i still highly recommend you add one of the low esr capacitors and again if you're doing anything below four inch then i'd put the small one anything above a four inch i would put the bigger capacitor here which is this one right there if you don't know how to set this up it's basically the same thing and they've even color coded the rails for you just right so the black one here would go to the ground and we have the red one will go to the bat here which is going to be the positive side of the battery rail now let's move these to the side so we're going to cover also fly sky fr sky how would we connect those up and also how to connect your camera and video transmitter so let's jump into the camera and video transmitter part so for the camera, it's going to be connected in this area right here. We have cam, 5 volt, and ground right there. And cam is going to be the yellow wire coming in from your camera. That's going to go right there. 5 volt is going to be the red wire coming from your camera. And we have the black wire, which is going to go to ground. And that would have your camera set up to go. Next thing we want to take a look at is the video transmitter part which is also going to be in the same area. However, it's going to be on the bottom side around here. Now we have two options here. You have five volt video transmitters and you also have battery voltage video transmitters, which is very important to know which one you have before actually installing the red wire of your video transmitter. So let's go ahead and start with the yellow wire of your video transmitter, which would be installed right here. Next, you have two options. If your video transmitter is five volt, then your red wire would go right here. If your video transmitter says it takes seven to 26 or whatever volts, then that wire would be installed right there. The red wire would be installed here. Next, we have our ground, which would be the black wire that would also be installed right there. And then next, if you have smart audio or something, you'd want to set that up right there. And that is currently TX1. So keep that in mind, which will be very useful for you. 
So now let's go ahead and jump into the receiver part. So we're going to start with the power for the receiver, which is the 5 volt in ground. So the receiver is going to be installed on this area right here. And what's really nice is they give you both 5 volt and 3.3 volts in case you had a spectrum receiver that only takes 3.3 volts. So we're going to start with an FR Sky receiver, which is an S bus receiver where you want to put your signal line would be right here. And this is basically RX2, but it says S bus. Now there's also another RX2 pad, which we'll cover in a bit. Now it's very important to put your FR Sky signal right here because if you put it anywhere else, it will not work because this is an F4 microcontroller unit and this is an inverted pad. So you want to put your S bus signal right there. Next, you want to give that power, which would be 5 volt. This would be the red wire and then ground, which would be the black wire. Now, if you're running Fly Sky, which is iBus, then what you want to do is the same thing with the power. You want to put your red wire right here, your black wire right here, and your signal iBus will go right here on the RX2 pad. Now, if you also had Spectrum, then this is your 3.3 volt regulator. Uh, if you're not Spectrum, just ignore that one. So next down the line, let's just say you want to put RGB LEDs. The first thing you want to do is give it power, which would be ground, which would be the black wire here. 5 volt is the red wire. And then for the LED signal pin, you'd want to go right there. Now, if you wanted to install a buzzer, then you're going to do it slightly different, which where you're going to put the 5 volt right here and the negative side of the buzzer right there and you should be good to go into that perspective so now to install your motors is very simple you have three pads here three pads here three and three and these should be installed correctly because again if this is installed in your quadcopter like this which it should be the back right motor is going to be connected here the front right the back left and the front left and that would have your quadcopter set up after you connect the video transmitter camera and your receiver and you're good to go just start flying now so that's what's really nice about these boards. They also save a lot of weight. And well, that's going to include it for this video, guys. Everything is linked down below. Come join my Patreon where I give all this stuff out for free. I do like 10 plus giveaways per month. And also for new Patreons, if I get like two new Patreons for the month, they get separate giveaway for them, a premium giveaway. So if let's just say I got three, it's just going to be between those three who's chosen. And for every dollar you put in, you get your name and entry. Not only that, you get access to my open hardware schematics for my open hardware flight controller and everything of that nature. And also my secret shop, which everything is like 50% off retail, which is pretty insane. And, well, that's it, guys. Everything's linked down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.